Thank Bye-bye. you. Okay, stream is up. What's the, what is it you say? The rabbit is... Rabbit is good. Rabbit is wise. There we go. I'm going to click the button to go over to our big ugly mugs. There we are. Make sure you tell me when you can see us. We're late tonight. Are we? We are a little late. It's almost eight. That's okay. We're going to rattle through this. I need to teach my dad how to put this on the TV since he's... Okay, 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 okay. Hit record. Hey, everybody. I'm Brian. And I'm Joey. Welcome to the Maryland Fishing Line, episode 25. Today is Tuesday. November 17, 2020. I feel very official tonight, Joe. Oh, I thought today was six. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I just, the way I said that, I sounded huh. very official, I thought. I like this, Alex Trebek. No, just you I'm not a Trebek about, cake. <laughs> you got to stop talking about Alex Trebek. This is a podcast where we talk about fishing, not Alex Trebek, throughout the great state of Maryland. He's a nice guy. He was a great guy. He's He missed. He'll be missed. I don't know who they're going to get to take over that. I've heard rumors Ken Jennings, but he's like got the uh, the personality of a wet noodle. I would say, didn't Will Ferrell pay, plays him on uh, SNL? Oh, yeah. Will, Will Ferrell, Ferrell, would be <laughs> Ferrell would be awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, and Sean Connery. Um, Sean. Ma- they're, they're both now you know, like up in wherever. Anyway. Oh, yeah, they both died. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Try back. I feel like there wasn't a big deal about Sean Connery dying. Uh, I don't think so either. I, I felt like they could have given him a little more love. So the Maryland Fishing Line is a production of the Angler Magazine, Chesapeake Edition. Tonight we've got a fishing report. We've got our own weekly fishing adventures. And, of course, this or that. I'm not sure I finished the this or that, though. We may have to do those on the fly. You look pale in the live feed. Me? Do yeah. I? Yep. Why do I look pale? I'm sorry, everybody. Put some light on you. Hey, Kyle says, I can see y'all. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> awesome. Um, before we get into anything else, though, Joey, I've got to do um, a little bit of business. Before say, you get too deep, when are we going shooting? I don't uh, know. JMJ Firearms in Mechanicsville, Maryland. Got to get a hold of Joseph and talk to him about that. I, I will do that. I want to make that my mission this week to get in on that. Um, but I do want to thank all of our sponsors. Waterfront Marine in Edgewater, Maryland, dealing in Rabalo fishing boats, Chaparral pleasure boats, and Bennington pontoon boats. You can find out more about all of that on their website at waterfrontmarine.com. As you mentioned, Joey, JMJ Firearms over in Mechanicsville, Maryland. If you need something to uh, shoot or something to shoot at or whatever, you can go see them and <laughs> they will take care of you. I don't know how that came out. Modern Air HVAC of Mechanicsville, Maryland. Robin Caballaro, Re- Remax One, a fantastic real estate agent. Uh, Stoney's Kingfishers in Solomons, Maryland. Scott's Cove Marina in Deal Island, Maryland. Huntingtown Automotive in Huntingtown, Maryland. E. Chesapeake in Dunkirk, Rosehaven, and Bowie, otherwise known as the Chesapeake Grill. You will find links to all of these fine businesses in our show notes or the show description. Make sure to tell them you heard about them here. Heard with heard. Is our live stream up and running, Joey? Outdoors in Maryland. Hey, he's here. Nice. Good to see you, Getty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. It's nice to. I look over and see. Um, I'm, I'm all laggy though. We've talked about this before. I think it's because I'm doing the streaming. I don't see stuff. The the same. You see things before I do. I'm just on YouTube. Yeah, I know, but but I think it's because I've got so much stuff, so much technology going on over here that it's hard for me to keep up with it. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on around the state. My dad is here. He said good evening. Mm. Nothing going on except rockfish and catfish. I think that's what everybody's talking about right now. Uh, we do have some very temperate weather setting in over the next week or so. So the fishing should be great. I think we're going to actually get some last hurrahs here before December hits from the kayaks, uh, before it's full-on boat season. I have heard reports, and this is, this is fresh off the presses, um, I've heard some reports of ocean fish showing up in the bay. Uh, what do you consider an ocean fish? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you, live lining spot is tuna producing, producing fish, stri- stripers, rockfish. That's what I'm telling <laughs> you. Oh, you. That's what you're after. Um, live lining some spot has produced fish up to 40 inches. And trollers with umbrella rigs are seeing some success with that same class of fish. And those are what I consider ocean fish. Finally, those big fish coming in. The best action seems to be from Cove Point to the power plant. Um, This is also a great catch and release time of year with cooler water temperatures and high salinity. So don't be afraid to look for birds and have some fun with those undersized fish. Oh, you give me perch. 
perch yeah. have gone deep, 30 feet of water or more. No, just <laughs> Try jigging them up on top or bottom rigs with bloodworms. Um, largemouth bass. Largemouth uh, are still on the menu. And just as these baits slow down um, and deep moving up. Man, I really, okay, sorry. Um, so largemouth are still around. Yeah. Just work those baits slower and deeper, moving up towards the shallow water as they progress. Is that what you were trying to say? Yeah. That's what you are trying to say. The chain pickerel bite <laughs> should be fun turning in on for freshwater anglers while you're doing the same type of fishing. I, I actually enjoy catching the pickerel. Oh, I do too. And I like that spring crossover season where you're fishing for large and, and you get the pickerel at the same time. They really do seem to shut down, though, when the, when the summer sets in. Yeah, no, they love the I love fishing for uh, pickerel, especially when I was on my paddleboard. It kind of keeps things going. Yeah. I say I've, I caught more pit fish standing up pickerel-wise because you, you didn't realize how many followed up to the boat like a little oh, musky yeah. would. Yeah. They, they, that was a they, blast. And they the way they, they attack it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you caught some nice pickerel this year too. Yeah, I've caught some really. I caught one that was uh, pushing three pounds. Um, probably one of my biggest pickerel. I think he came in at like uh, I can't remember. I need to look it up. It was that like was 20, twenty-six inches, maybe. I think is what yeah. it was. Twenty-four, twenty-six, something like that. Um, but I do. I, I agree with you. The way that they seem to always follow a bait, you you get to see them take the bait a lot, and that's the thing I, I love Either about that. Or they pickerel. go full on like air jaws from the side and just yeah. molly wop it. Yeah, I don't know if I say well, that. That's a nice word, molly wop. Yeah. I like that. I don't know what that is. But. Um, I think I'm allowed to say it. I um, think so. I've never heard it. I got some snakehead news, but snakehead, live bait under bobbers is the best trick right now. Um, the fishing is great with these water temp, with these warm temps. Especially over at um, Blackwater, because that water is so dark, hence the name Blackwater. The yeah. tannins get in the water over there, and the water warms up on those flats really quick. So it doesn't take much. You get a few 60-degree days in, in the dead of winter, yep. warm that water up, and those snakehead will turn on. But still, your best bet is some live bait under some bobbers. That, hands yep. down, is your winter fishing success right there. Um, catfish are around. They're coming back up. Find the bait. Find the fish. Um, anything that smells bad, cut bait, clam snouts, night crawlers, chicken livers. Um, I went out with um, Jerry and Chris yep. just on Saturday. And I had I had it in my head. I had all my gear set up because I've been marking. I told we've talked about this before. I've been marking fish in the creek that are uh-huh. not rockfish, and I've had a hard time kind of figuring out what to wear. And I got to be catfish. Leaves. But, well, I I think the big bunches are leaves because I'll, I'll mark something that looks like it's um something that's sitting just off of a ledge, and it'll be a blob, but it's not a bait blob because there's a lot of consistency to it. It'll be about two to three feet off of the bottom, and it's just it's really uniform. And I think those are leaves. Or debris. Yeah, so I'm marking collected. leaves on humps out here doing that. Yeah, and I think that's what that is. But I've definitely marked arches and and what looks like a fish sitting still, definitely separated from the bottom, um, not like fish. So I went out thinking, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring some some cut bait and gonna just when we go out, we were looking for rockfish, but when we went out, I was gonna just try. When I saw some of those those fish, I was gonna try to drop it down, but I didn't have anything to cut. <laughs> no bait. I thought for sure I'd have some perch still frozen in the freezer. I dug all through everything. I could find no perch, nothing that even resembled cut bait. Um, I got a bunch of chicken necks that I put in the crab pots, and I almost took a couple of them to try. It's like you know what? Maybe. Oh god. <laughs> I don't think it would actually work though. Um, so that's what's going on in world right now anything in the live stream joey um yeah paul chimed in and then sean just chimed in uh, so we got some uh live viewers cool going on right now hmm? yep. Mm, yep so yep 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 so have you been fishing at all man have i i, I have the Talk same problem I, I always have the problem i need to write down maybe i should keep a journal i just had kidding. the same issue <laughs> so. um i think i've put out Four or five times since the last episode. You've been fishing a lot in the morning. Well, now you got dark time at five o'clock, mm-hmm. um, which means you got to get up at five o'clock in the morning. So I think I did four trips. Three of them were with people that wanted me to take them out, and I got out by myself on the the worst day of all of them, which I think was my fourth trip on Sunday, just in within like five days. So I I, I crammed a lot of that. Um, it wore me out, and I'm still kind of. Worn out. And this week's gonna be a little different because it's actually cold this week. Yeah. Um, the mornings are gonna be cold. It's still, yeah. almost, it's still supposed to warm up in the afternoon. Yeah. So I think it was last. So my first trip on Wednesday, my neighbor uh, Steve over here, um, who got a Slayer, asked me 
when I was taking them out again and it happened to be a, a uh, yeah, last it was Wednesday morning. I said, let's go, let's go at six o'clock, you know, be on the water by six. So we get down there and we just walk down. Um, somewhat slow in the early part in the last like 40 minutes. Um, I was fishing, I've been fishing a lot of docks um, in between them and different structure. Um, still don't have my garment on at this point. And we found um, a nice school of fish. Not They were breaking anything, just kind of all collected in the one area. Mm-hmm. And every cast was a 15 to 18 inch fish with the nice. fat bellies. And they are so fat right now, oh, aren't yeah. they? Oh my god, they're so fat. Had some puppy drum mixed in too. Did you? You've got more over this fish. last week, uh, last Wednesday and last Friday, I think. So I took them off the report this week because I was thinking that I oh. hadn't seen any. I didn't uh, see any pictures. Pete Dahlberg from you. was catching like keeper size over him across How the bay. Um, nice. He caught some fat trout too. Um, trout too. Oh, some really fat trout, like oh, full on twenty plus inch gators. I kind of was thinking that those fish had kind of um, uh, moved on out to their little deeper little hidey holes. Um, well, I caught trout on Sunday, but um, no, mm-hmm. like Wednesday was a blast, and it was almost the point where <laughs> I had, I think, yeah, no Wednesday. I had to be back for a meeting. I had someone I had to talk to uh, work wise. I was like, oh man, this kind of sucks. So, like I was leaving fish, but oh. I had to be back. Um, and it was a gross morning. I love the nasty mornings, as long as I'm not getting drenched. And it wasn't raining, but just dark, misty, cold. Nobody uh, else is out. Yeah. And you don't have I to think, worry about the boat traffic. Yeah. You know, nothing. And then Friday morning, uh, same thing. I asked Steve. He asked me to go out again. I said, if you want a chance of getting wet, let's go. Um, actually, rain held off on Friday. We, got a, we had a good morning with some nice fish. Um, he's been getting into the trolling lately. Um, just up and down uh, stuff in the creek that we kind of know where the edges are, mm-hmm. and he's been he's been doing really well with that. We had a decent morning, I think you know half a dozen plus fish each for us. Well, you know, I enjoy that too. Yeah, I do a oh, lot of it too. But this last weekend, I I was ready to stop that. I got so tired oh. of pedaling my boat. Oh. <laughs> it's like I just want to stop and throw so, a bait at a fish. I'm actually doing really <laughs> well in the point of like I don't actually go out for trolling but if i know i'm going from one area to the other yeah i'll chuck on a ride but on my titan because they expect the thing i miss about the slayer one aspect of it is the built-in rod holders mm-hmm. and the titan i guess they're assuming because they have they actually have the built-in rod storage on the sides right and they i think they think everyone's gonna use those black back black pack or whatever crates or whatever from mm-hmm. yak attack and all the boxes for your rods that's where you're going to store your rods vertically um, so what I do is I either hold it or I can take my, my Shimano rod has a really long butt. Okay. And I actually put it behind my butt on the rail and it, and it just sticks straight out. That's and it doesn't go anywhere. Like it is, <laughs> I know it's not going to go anywhere the way it's wedged in there. And I've, I catch a lot of fish just putting it like that. So I actually got some, um, I actually have yak attack rod yeah. holders on the way. I got yak attacks and I've got them set up on, you know, I'm a yak attack about- dealer. Yeah, I know. I, I get your Brian I, discount. I know, but I I'm just going to give you crap. I know you did that. I don't think you had those. No, I didn't. Okay. And I, I've actually on. I've told you I've ordered stuff on Amazon because it comes quicker. I know. <laughs> they're fi- <laughs> as of last week. They're finally caught up. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to wait for my fish finder. Holder, what I so. need to do is when my my endeavor begins. Yeah. I'm going to have a pretty big order for you. I did skip the preseason, which was due this week. I ordered oh, a lot of okay. other stuff. Yeah. It was just. It's not yeah. any incentive for me, yeah. but. No, it'll. it'll um, I'm gonna have a pretty big order for you, though. For yeah, so my dad's going. You got your stuff. My dad's getting a new Titan. There's other. Yeah. You know, I I need some stuff. I've been doing a stocking order for the store, but uh, I was just giving you a hard time. No, that's okay. But yeah, the way I wedge that that rod, it's just the butt is just long enough. Where mm-hmm. even if I get a good yank, it hits my. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. But I've put, I've produced a good amount of fish, um, just trolling from spot to spot. I I'm gonna tell you what I, I have caught. You caught a lot of nice fish trolling. I have I have looked at my phone. I did this just a couple of days ago. I was looking at pictures on my phone, and since September, you caught like, four fish. I, I I can't even I couldn't even tell you how many. It's just my my phone is just pi- pictures of fish and fish and fish and fish and fish. Just how's your wife feel about that? Um, as long as I bring one home every once in a while, yeah. she's okay with it. I always get though. That's all fish pictures. <laughs> um, that's Friday. Friday was okay morning. Friday was just it was nice to fish before work. Now you're fishing Mill Creek. Yeah, yeah. Down I haven't um, so I have, re- give everybody a reference point. Yeah, I'm fishing Moore Creek, and I either pick. Actually, Friday we actually fished uh, south side from our house out to the mouth of the harbor. 
Okay. Is where we fish Friday. Okay. And Wednesday we fish the this side of other it. Other direction. Yeah. I never try to I don't try to repeat. Um it's a lot of water. And then sometimes I'll go up yeah. the other side of Mill Creek and St. John's and then What's so, nice you're you're in the middle. There's a lot of water. You can you can go either way depending upon what needs to be done. That's, can, that's actually really nice. I can fish four different styles. If yeah. I wanted to, I can go all the way up St. John's, I can go up Mill Creek, I can fish right here, and then I can go out through the harbor into like the mouth. You know, because where I am on St. Leonard Creek, mm-hmm. I'm all the way up at the top. So yeah. for, for me you, to you get just that. <laughs> for me to get all the way down past Breedens, to get all the way down to the mouth of the creek mm-hmm. on the river, that's about a six mile pedal. Yeah. And mm, maybe call it five. I'll call yeah. it five. Um it's a long ways. And and I don't have the option like to you you've got some nice options though. That's nice. I like yeah. I think that's really I got cool. I got stuff to pick from. Especially with so I was talking about fishing Friday, and I had a coworker, Evan, who has been dying for me to take him out all summer. And it finally was like, I don't know, it's like, you want to go out Saturday morning? I was like, I'll get up again. I was like, Saturdays are better because I don't have to. I have an hour later for work um, with my hours. So he got over here at six o'clock because uh, I didn't know if he was. I said, if you don't wake up, I mean, that's was he out in the bonafide? Yeah, he took out my dad's bonafide. I said, I have a kayak ready for you. I got rods. I was like, I'll literally just show up. I. Literally had everything down to extra. I had, gave him a rubber rubber boots and a rain jacket. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, like I, I had everything ready for him, and it was that one. He's he's very new to fishing, but he loves fishing. He's done all yeah. my fish pictures. He, I don't know if I've shown you some of the drawings. He did a really nice pencil etch of a redfish, a speckled trout, wow. and a flounder for me, like a low country uh, threesome, a little slam. Um, and he's done a redfish like thing on canvas and a marsh with the tail. I don't know. He's a really good artist, and he's only cool. in high school. So he asked me to go out, and I figured I owed it to him. But it was, it was a little bit more work. Like Evan is new to it, and I basically was guiding him the whole time. I sat with him. I didn't fish. You know, I rigged up his rod. And I told him how to, and told him all till he's. And I got him to spots where I knew I could catch little fish. We went yeah. up the creek and caught little fish. And it's, he probably got up to fifteen, which was nice. Nice. And then I started fishing, but it was about two hours of going with Evan like that. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to start fishing. And like first couple casts, I got lucky and I caught like a 18 or 19. And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> and then I took him to a couple more spots over here. I'm like, this is the fish factory. This is where like at night all these piers have lights on them. I was like, you fish this and you're going to catch, you'll catch smaller fish. And he did, which was fun. And then we came in. And I caught like a 20 inch fish trolling across from the other side of my point of the creek over isn't to it, these boats. Isn't it weird how you'll pick And up I was like on my phone texting. Yeah. And then my rod just. Like, that, oh. that happens to me all the time. Yeah. It's usually that when I'm not paying attention. All the time. And he's like, oh, man. <laughs> I was like, I didn't mean to. I was like, And I was like, here, come over here. And I was, I was reel it in, and he didn't want to. I, I should legit like invest money in the saltwater bass assassin, like whoever makes those. Because I, I, I can tell you, I've, I've gone through so many packages of those. Oh, know. yeah. So I, I, got, I got four more or two like, more or whatever. Uh, um, so that was fun. Evan had, a bla- Evan had a blast. He wants to go back again. Let him keep the boots. And he was hooked. like, "These things are awesome." Like, you get him you the boots. Yeah. yeah, you get him hooked. Which is cool because he's seventeen years old. That's nice. And that was a blast. Um, and then yeah, Sunday I just went because I Saturday I actually hooked up my transducer on the Titan. Didn't I just ran everything dry like the cable? It doesn't look. It looks okay. Now, weren't you? Weren't are you still going to do the whole light package? I am. You can do that. So I'm trying to. That's why I haven't drilled anything. Okay. I want to figure out the best option because I'm probably going to run two batteries in a dry box and then split them. And because I only have the seven amp hour Dakota lithium, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm either going to buy a bigger one or buy two of those because those are only like sixty dollars each. Buy a bigger one. Well, at the time I could only buy the seven. I could only have access. I was too impatient. You're you're creating. So I'll probably get a twelve or fourteen amp hour, whatever. You're creating a bit of an issue with you know the complexity of having to wire it. When you put yeah. two in, when you could just put one in. My 10 yeah. amp, I, I, what I'll I probably do is get a, since like my, I don't know if my dad's going to run lights, but eventually if he gets like a sonar, oh. he could take the seven amp hour, which will run three days for you, him. You could also run it, you could put it together so that the seven amp hour, you could run the lights oh, yeah. on one and run your finder. The on yak power, the whole switchboard. Yeah. Yeah, I could. Yeah, you, there's you 20 different ways to okay. get a pick. So that's I, why I forgot you do it. That's why that. I haven't done any like I have it actually all the way back by my seat and my battery, my dry box is under my seat which works perfectly cuz the power cord on on the Garmin is only like 7 feet long. You don't have mm-hmm. a lot of access with that. Versus like a 30 foot transducer cord. Yeah. yeah. Um 
So still want to make the best choice on how I'm going to put a hole in the boat for that. But as is, it, it worked. And I ran Sunday on the windy day. I had a short morning because it was getting windy and I wanted to watch the Masters with my dad. Um, but I, I caught speckled trout up the creek and went up St. John's towards Anne Gardens. Okay. And I got to a point where it was getting really windy. And I was catching, you know, like 12-inch speckled trout, which was pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, especially this time of year. Not expecting to catch them. Um, and I was I was up St. John's just outside of Anne Gardens but in this housing community where it's a small cove. I was actually taking pictures because I got a new camera. And I had these ridiculously splash, splashes around me. Um, and I was like, these are almost like snakehead. And Ooh. I've been hearing rumors about snakehead, and I could have been. I thought I saw a snakehead. So what I did was, um, I my one like uh, I called the dishwasher box. I have mm-hmm. everything in that tackle box, no matter what. And I had white uh, horny toads. So I tied on a white horny toad with a, um, a, a one of those weird worm hooks, and I caught about a fifteen inch snakehead in St. John's Creek. Did you really? And I lost it by the boat. Oh well, then I don't believe it. Well, yeah, say so no one's gonna believe it, but <laughs> but there's there it. was snake. Well, I've also Steve's been telling me he he saw a snakehead chase a muskrat by our pier. See now, okay, in in the shallow water side, so and it didn't. It just followed it. I have noticed in my creek, as you know, I'm right at the little pinch point where the power lines go through at St. Leonard. Mm-hmm. Um, the last week or so, as I was fishing down. Because I never really fish above my pier, yeah. Because it gets it gets real shallow when it starts to get grassy, snakehead area. Well, yeah, and I'd always heard that there was some snakehead up in mm-hmm. there, um, but I've never seen them. I fished for them a few times, and I've yeah. never seen any sign of them. Um, so I'd kind of given up on that. But some point during last week when I was fishing, I came back up the creek, and the wind had laid down to the point where that top little basin was real calm. Mm-hmm. So I took the boat and I was moving up, but I saw a couple of fish surface mm-hmm. with you know the head come out of the water. See, I saw two heads come out of the water, and I I think it was I think if I had to, it was far enough up that I mm-hmm. think it was very shallow, and um, I, I'm pretty sure that was a snakehead, not 100. percent Well, but. the reason after I heard the splashes, I knew a snakehead. I saw it looked like a couple of heads coming out of the water um, by a pier. Mm-hmm. So you know if you pass as if you pass um, Anne Marie Gardens. As soon as you get past that gate, there's that development, and it, yeah. you turn left in there, and it goes back. It was behind them, okay, in their little creek, and it gets tight. Um, and yeah, I swore little heads were coming out of the water. I, you know, I, it, have you seen any bubbles? Have you seen any of the bubbles? I was really? only in there a short period because the okay. wind. Okay, but it was, but I was in there because it was all blocked by the wind. So so hard to target them in places like that. Well, I had one whack that horny toad on top water. See, and this was just within the last week? This was Sunday. Wow. Wow. I was holding out for the podcast because I was... Yeah, because you I told my dad that. when he was here. Uh, um, uh, I, I, I would not be at all surprised that, that there's actually a healthy population oh, yeah. of them up in there. And like Steve said, he's been seeing them in the little marshy section on the other side of our piers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's down there about every day. They will. It's really high salinity right now, though, which kind of is the surprising point. Even with um, all that rain? Uh, yeah, I guess that rain could kind of drive them. Because this was just after could, all that rain. It could push that water yeah. down, and then those fish come up. And, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of water time this week, and I got the carbon back on. It was really nice, and I'm kind of... So the one thing I noticed, do you have a lot of leaf, debris, pine needles, everything up there? Because that's... Been, oh, yeah. Oh, I... <laughs> oh that's been... I, I know I've lost fish because of that. Um, do, on your... On your depth finder your sonar or whatever do you, can you see all that stuff as detailed as i think i've been seeing it yeah yeah it's been ridiculous it's all like little yeah. scattered dots in my clear yeah. view yeah uh, so i don't have side scan my, my clear view has actually been i've been in a lot of places where i've been seeing a lot of like logs and stuff mm-hmm. it shows up clear as day on clear view which is cool yeah um, i'm i'm, you I'm know, seeing a lot of all that debris my in down the water. my down scan I don't. I don't think I. I, I think there's still something settings in so, it. that are different because I. I can't pick up the detail that I see in a lot of. Them. I was going to text you and Jerry and see what hurts or uh, whatever it's called. You guys were running your different. I mean, I have a lot of different options on that. So I don't. I don't keep my down scan running. Um, I keep uh, uh, my charts running uh-huh. next to my my sonar. 
And those two things. And if I need clarification on something, mm-hmm. if I'm looking for more information, if I see something and I'm kind of scratching my head, mm-hmm. I've got a screen that I can toggle over to that will show me my down scan. But my down scan, I'll see a lot of things on my sonar that I don't see on the down scan. I say I run them. Luckily, you guys told me to buy the bigger screen. Yeah. I run them so big next to each other. I, I run them next to each other. And I see stuff on one that's not on the other. Yeah. Um, but I was I was surprised how I mean, there, you could just see all the debris on top, and it's just all the way down. Yeah. Well, and you get you're always going to get a lot of scatter on the top. Yeah. You know. But when, you could just see it clogging up all the way down. Yeah. And I, uh, I we talked about that. I, I I see those big balls, and I've taken some pictures of yeah. my, what my sonar looks like, um, and I'll sh- I'll show them to you later. Where where I think mm. there's it's just leaf debris down yeah. on the bottom. I think I think that's what it is, but I'm not. You know, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd like to, I'd like mm-hmm. some way to clarify it. But yeah, and um, that, that honestly is one of the reasons we talked about this last week, where I'm trying to figure out the the cast net. Yeah. Um, and it'll be a while. I don't think I'm going to go out in cold water and start playing with that game. You should. But no, <laughs> no, no. Um, I got to learn to throw. I think seated before mm-hmm. I go there. Yeah. Um, is to actually try to get a net down there and actually see if I can pick up some of the, what that is down yeah. there. Yeah. Try to figure it out. Um. That was that was my fishing week. I I picked up. Uh, my dad was getting some uh, work done up in Annapolis at a doctor's appointment yesterday. Um, so I stayed off the water and uh, waited for him. Um, and I uh, went with my mom. I I picked up some. I picked up more of the saltwater sasses <laughs> <laughs> while I was up there. I went in for a GI jigs to uh, a tackle <laughs> shop up there. I should actually went down to anglers while I was up there. Uh, that's my go to. But yeah, there's more of those sitting on my. Um, they didn't have everything I wanted. I did. Um, I tie my own leaders uh, for my fly rods, mm-hmm. and when I tie a leader, it's like eight feet long and like sixty, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty pound. Like mm-hmm. tie it all in sections, and I spent like an hour last night doing that. Multiple oh leaders. Oh my goodness! It was actually kind of. It was actually kind of nice. It was relaxing, but I tied multiple. I redid the ones on my current reels because we were heading down um, Sunday. We're taking the morning, and my neighbor Steve. We're gonna run. I won't say where. We're going really far south, okay. uh, and he's got a big. He's got a big center console, so it should be fine. Uh, I'm hoping to find some bigger fish. Watch but the I did tie. The um, I tie like five or six extra, so I can actually loop them on instead of. The nice thing with leaders on fly fishing is since you tie them in segments, you don't have to redo the whole thing. If you carry your spools with you, mm. they can retie like the thirty and twenty pound in like three foot sections, but. It's a pain in the butt. You got to be good at knots, and I was. You're gonna, you're gonna. It's funny you should talk about that because later on, and I've got that's uh, that's a part of my this or that's this week. I love knots, and I was big on knots when I was in scouts. But man, sometimes there's just too many, and you forget uh, them, and you have to look them up, and you're like, "How did you learn how to tie it this way?" And you're like, <laughs> are you, "Were you drunk and it just happened to work?" Like, I, you know, that happens to me a lot. I wish everything could be like the Palomar knot, and it would just I, work. I look at the way people tie knots on YouTube because I watch, and I'm trying to figure out new knots. Especially mm-hmm. this year, I've really gotten into. Um, I've, I've never been a big leader, um, tied a big, you know, cause I've always fished fluoro. Mm-hmm. I'm not, a, I've never fished a lot of braid until this year. So I had to figure out the right knots. I'm still doing uni to uni for the, for the leader, um, braid to fluoro. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I've tried all kind of different knots and you watch people tie them on YouTube and it's like, Oh, that doesn't look that hard. And then, you know, with your old man eyes, you four beers in, in. <laughs> you're like, oh <laughs> man, what is going on here? And you just end up with this big, you know, mess right in front of you. So, um, anything no, it's on, crazy. Anything in the live stream anything going on over there? No, um, you are much better at monitoring uh, that than I am. I'm, I can't read this far back. Uh, fire bear, fire, man, I, firebird, firebird. So I actually got close cause I couldn't read if it was free beer. Um, <laughs> He agreed wholeheartedly. Free beer. Bass, that's bass what it is. Sacks Free is beer. <laughs> um, yeah, two bags disappeared in Daisley, and then yep, good dang boo fish. What is that? I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, sh- I know Sean runs double batteries. Um, we'll figure out how to do it. I, um, so my dad's Titan production date is December fifteenth. There's actually I wonder if Phil's on here because I have a surprise for Phil, but. Um, I might have his boat way sooner than he thought. I, I talked to Phil earlier he, today. I was going to say, he asked me about dry suits. Yeah, he asked me about dry suits. That's and um, I, had. I basically, I don't know. I don't know how I'll go in the cold. At a certain point, I'll probably fish St. Mary's Lake when it's cold. I don't know if I'll wear my waders with a wading belt and a nice jacket like I always wear. Because I wear a, um, like a Patagonia wool thing. Dude, legit, like, you got to seal that water out. Um, waders won't do it. Waders yeah, but are you going to... I am very comfortable with knowing I'm not going to fall in. 
Okay, well, you know. But I'm also not going to go when it's freaking cold. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I would say, because right now I'm wearing, I'm wearing pants that I know aren't going to get sopping. If they get wet, they're not going to get heavy, and I wear muck boots and a good top. So that's that's why I really don't fish the mornings. Mornings are cold. They're cause the they're water cold. was 58 and 54 or whatever the other day. I know you're real close to that 120. You know, that one. Oh, I'm past that one. <laughs> no, but you're close. If, if you're talking like 58 and 56, I mean. Well, Saturday was 54 water temp and 42 air temp. Yeah, yeah, you're a little bit below where yeah. I, would, I would feel comfortable. I am in a barge, that. so I feel comfortable. I yeah. know, I know, obviously, you should always plan. <laughs> yeah. Um, plan like you're going swimming. Yeah. You know, so I'll, I'll wait for that. But if it's like water temp 58, air temp 60. Um, I mean, you're you're close enough. I think there's a margin for error there at that 120 rule. And so everybody knows they don't know what we're talking about. The 120 rule for kayak fishing is if they combined paddling. or paddling. I've general. been going about that for years. Yeah, it's um, um, 120 is the number you want to combine the air, air and temp water. and the water temp. And if it's above 120, should be good to go. If it's below 120, you want to prepare for an experience if you happen to go in the water. And probably the best way to do that, wetsuits are designed to be wet. Yep. A dry suit is designed to keep you dry. And my my biggest complaint with the dry suit is how hot it gets yeah. on those days when the sun is out. This is basically like a sweat box. You're basically in like a little sauna. And it's like ugh. the price of a kayak. Um, you know, I got my Cocoa Pet for... Say what? Um, Cucumbera? Cuckoo bear, cuckoo bear sits. <laughs> it um, it's about six hundred bucks for my dry suit. Jeez, you know it. It, you know, well, what's the cost of your life? I was scoffing at ten dollars for new underwear the other day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you got anything else? You know, I'll keep talking. There's something I forgot about. I think part of it is um, yeah, I found out recently the I'm getting my dad's Titan the twelfth or the fifteenth of December, which around the time period, but Phillips. Um, who came down and demoed mine and all might be getting his a little bit sooner than I told him. Oh, and I'm really excited that. to tell him, but I'm not going to straight up tell him. I want him to wait till he listens to this and then shoot me a message because he'll do it right back. Cool. Um, which is kind of cool. No, I was, um, I've been playing around and I want to know what people are running their fish finders at their sonar units as far as the Hertz mm-hmm. or K K H whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, bandwidth. the, the what, KHZ, what's, what's the bandwidth? um, what they're running. Mm-hmm. Because I want to figure out how to fine tune it. I know at a certain point you might just be chasing stuff, but I feel at some point you can pick up more detail. You lose other things. I don't know. I'm I'm new to it and I watched a lot, but it depends on who you talk to. There's a um a guy. I don't know if Jerry's teched out on this. Um, a YouTube channel, Fish the Moment. They say I did. I unfollowed him because um he posts like a video every day. Yeah, a a very good, very in depth, long format video too. It's crazy. Yeah. So um, I did. I got out. I'm going to jump into me since. But if you think, oh no, of anything, I'm not done. No, sorry. If I know you I'm think done. of anything that you want to bring back up, then please feel free. You know, on. I will. I did get out over the weekend on the creek with um, Jerry and Chris, and I got some nice fish. I thought. I mean, I, I we fished a long time. Like when I would go out, I like didn't get an invite six or eight weeks ago. That wasn't my gig. That was no, I'm just <laughs> I would go when I was like like two months ago. I'd go out and I'd catch twenty twenty five fish in the course of like. Well, two you told or me three all your hours. fish came down here. And now I think they've all come down here, so it doesn't happen anymore. So the last few weeks when I've been going out, it's like you'll catch four or five or six fish. And um, the last few weeks, they've not been at any real they, – they've been quality fish because they're all fat, and they're 15 inches, and those fat 15 inches feel fun. like they're, they're monsters. Um, but this, this um, last weekend, I only picked up five fish, but three of them were just shy of 19 inches. I mean, there were two that were 18 and a half, one that was 18 and three quarters that I probably could have stretched, but that's just not worth it. Um, I'm still not sure I really am keeping any more fish this year if I catch any. Uh, I don't think I will. That could change. Um, but I was excited because it had been a while since in the creek, we really, then I had picked up some real quality, almost keeper size yeah. fish. Um, so I, but I still think this week i'm going to pull the boat up from the pier i've talked about this the last couple of weeks going to finally go ahead and do it this week and then i do want to come down with you at some point and kind of hit the creek before it gets to shutdown mode from my perspective which is weather dependent for me weather driven i'm hoping I'm, that after this next I, few days it doesn't shut off it could it could I, there was a couple of um 
days. Remember, it was really warm and it got up yeah. into like the seventies. I almost think that was like it got too warm. I think a couple of things happened. Um, there was a lot of boat traffic on my creek, and it drove a lot of fish down. I think mm-hmm. I, that's just my personal opinion. But also, I think the patterns just are off. The bait yeah. fish, the bait fish pattern is off for the time of year when the weather does something quirky like that. So I, I don't know if there's any. I don't know. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not. That's just me. Um, so I was I was actually excited to be able to actually get on some fish. I put the December magazine to bed just a few days ago. Joey, can you believe that? December is put to bed. Where are, I'm already talking about. I'm thinking about now about 2021 magazines that are going to go out. I <laughs> this this it's so strange in that. With this time of COVID, how things seem to be so, like, drawn out. And it just feels like it's just never going to end. Not working retail. But at the, uh, at the same, so I'm well, saying at the same time, on that side of the house, on the publishing side of the house, it feels like time is just flying. Just, mm-hmm. just zooming by. Just just zooming by. All right. Anything going on in the live stream we want to check uh, out? Philip is here. Hey, <laughs> uh, so you're going to tell him what's going on? Oh, look, no. we just got a bandwidth warning. So, Oh, sweet. Um, <laughs> I told you I forgot to bring that. We didn't talk about the big Ethernet cable. No, that's Or okay. doing it in the other room. We'll do it. We'll figure it out. Um, I will say, like, Wednesday morning, after the big rains we had, what, Monday, Tuesday, um, where, like, Leonardtown was flooded and stuff, mm. our, our water was like chocolate milk. Oh, yeah. But Wednesday yeah, it got actually real dirty. fished really well. Yeah. And I was hoping by Friday after a couple tide, you know, some good tide changes, it was still dirty, but the top water on Friday was really good. Really? And I, like, I'm not fishing top water a hundred, like I was, you know, like a month ago when it was really on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always take an extra, I always take one of my rods set up with a big plug. Yeah. With like a bomber or spook or something. Yeah, I keep one too. And I would, I'd always fish just one area with that first. And um, it was actually doing really well. Have like, ever, I pulled in some good fish. Have you ever tried to troll a topwater? No. Like, with the poppers? I've done that. Well, right now, the problem with... The thing I hate about topwater right now... It picks up The so leaves, leaves and the pine and needles. Even trolling does. So, I'm saying I've... Yeah, even trolling with a... I'll troll a little GI jig, mm-hmm. like, a, with a paddle tail. And sometimes I pick up that stuff, it's, which is crazy, um, which really uh, upsets me with the plug, because there's some areas where I know... Um, I'll miss some fish and I get back in there and as soon as I get back in there I'm I'm snagged on a leaf and yeah. I blow the I blow the hole. So So is there something you wanted to share with, with Oh he missed it. That's right, he missed it. Yeah, That's right. Big native, oh, annou- okay. big yeah, native yeah. announcement yeah. he missed yeah, it. Yeah, he missed it. He missed his announcement. Sorry um, about that. I so Sean, if you're still here, you're gonna you're gonna get a kick out of this. I've been looking, Joey. Joey. Oh, I'm, we're going to this I, one now. We're gonna go there. I've been actually looking for a little I've got enough stuff in my... I swiped it from you. No, you didn't. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> so I've got enough stuff between my my barn and the warehouse. I probably got enough stuff on hand that I could put together a little trailer. I've been thinking about building a little trailer to tote the kayak up and down the hill because you know how hard it is to get up and down that hill. So I was like, you know what? I could just put a little center beam and a couple little bunks, build a little axle, little support system, something a little simple and small. I was like, well, let me look around, though, first and see if there's any jet ski trailers out there, something that I could hack apart or take apart or, you know, modify or change before I went and started to do a build it from scratch. Because I would have to probably go buy a, a hitch or, you know, something like that. I'd probably have to pick up something. Um, so earlier today, Sean posted something on the Yak Anglers group on your little Yak Anglers that's group. That's like, I thought it was hey, Sean that posted it. Hey, look, he did. He's like, Hey, look, there's somebody selling a little trailer. So I was like, Oh, cool, that's a good find. So I sent the guy a message. It's like I made an offer. I made an offer. I thought it was a fair offer. But you know, I got I got rudely shut down. <laughs> In my opinion, rudely shut down. There was no like, hey, that's not really, you know, where I'm at or whatever. And then I'm coming here tonight and I'm telling Joey this story. Sean, I'm telling Joey the story. My buddy, Sean, I'm my buddy, Joey, I'm telling him the story. And then you know what Joey says to me? Yeah, I was just over uh, in the yard over here and I <laughs> bought that trailer. <laughs> It, it, uh, he was storing the, the trailers across the street from my house from in the uh, in the boatyard. I, you know, I should have known from the picture because it was in the tennis court, right? In the little 
like over there? No, no it was, not the tennis it was, court. It was, it was down at the, um, okay. you know, where all the boathouses are at Washburn's. Yeah. I mean, you know, I made an offer on it because it looked like it was, you know, who, who knows what you're getting when you get a trailer like that. It's been in and out of salt water around here. You know, your bearings, you have to repack those bearings, Joey. Don't be, don't, don't be towing that it's, it's not my trailer. Well, tell Dave to repack those bearings because it's I Dave's. guarantee you they need to be, they need grease in them. I can guarantee you that. Even if they got bearing buddies he on there. He said they were squeaky clean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Sean and I were talking about that this afternoon on the, the Facebook group. We were, we were kind of laughing about that. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought it was funny that I show up here and you just had gone over there and snaked I, I Yeah, when you saw me, I came over from his house. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's funny. I well, just think it's funny. Dave wants it for a 18-foot dead rise skiff that he had built. Is that trailer going to be big enough? It basically has to move it for the winter, like two miles. See, all I was looking for, I want something that I can put on the front of my Kubota and yeah. I can drive it down the hill around that little bend. I can drop the kayak on it. I can turn the Kubota around, hook it up on the back, and then bring it back up the hill. I don't, I don't need anything that I'm taking out on the road. So that's why I was like, if I could build a little center beam with a couple little bunks, put an axle, a couple of wheels on it, that's all I need. And so I, I literally think I have enough galvanized um, square tube that I could just build it. But well, this guy. But it was already that's what and that's what I was looking at. It's like well, well, Dave's been looking for one. I was like, hey, here's a trailer. <laughs> I, I read that he won't take fifty. <laughs> he won't take a hundred. <laughs> well, he went. He back, won't take one hundred forty nine ninety nine. Went back into his post. It was like I thought it was rude. <laughs> it's like I, the when I saw it, that's all it said. No, it didn't say that before. It just said, here's this trailer with this beat-up-looking little trailer. And it was like, here's the price. And I was like, oh, would you take this much for it? If, if I insulted you, I'm so very sorry, but whatever. It's just a little... I thought it was rude. How rude? I thought it was rude. I think Sean thought it was rude. So that's Well, that. now you enjoy your, little, enjoy your little busted-up trailer. The joke's on you. I paid 50 bucks for it. <laughs> I told Sean. I was like, he said he would... He, he, when I asked him, I said, would you take 75? And he said, no. And then made his little change. And I said, I told Sean, I said, I should go back and ask him, say, well, would you take 65 if you wouldn't take 75? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, repack those bearings, buddy, because I can guarantee you they're going to need it. Oh, no. I, I am the middleman. I happen to live <laughs> nearby, and that's my boss that wanted it. Who doesn't have Facebook? Uh, hey, man, we got another. T- we got more t shirt orders while we were cool. in there. Uh, nice. We can do it. Um, we'll, we'll figure out fishing one later. Good deal. Good deal. Um, no, I said Dave wants it. I'm looking. I am looking over the wood for one, um, a trailer. I've been talking to you about it because mm. I think I was telling you last week, and you were leaving um, with my dad having the Titan ten, yeah, to ten five, and my Titan twelve. It's it's a lot of. work. I mean, I love my truck, but two boats in that thing isn't going to work well. Work. It will. I mean, if we take the seat, we could stack them. Yeah, like temporary. You know, if we want to go up to fish Matter Woman or something, I'll just stack them. But eventually, what I would like to do for both of us, I think. Oh, we'll try to get a. He doesn't. He might hear it on here now. Is he'll need he like putting a little hitch on his uh, his little SUV. Mm-hmm. Um, the truck I already have it all set up, but um, need a trailer for a couple boats like that. Yeah, just to be easy. I it, mean, putting it, it putting one on easy, top yeah. of my rack. Yeah, I mean, I could put eight hundred to a thousand pounds or whatever on the roof of my truck. See, your your thing though is going to be because you keep your boats like me. You keep your boats down at the water. Yeah. But my where my dad's at, he can leave his boat on that trailer. So yeah, it, it makes sense for him. Yeah, if you're in a spot where you're always having to put yeah. a boat, but for me with my boat over this last summer when I was fishing it, having it on the cart in the barn, mm-hmm. I would literally just push yeah. it out, jam it in the back of the truck, strap it down, and I was gone. It was like yeah. less than five minutes from the time I said, "Hey, I'm going to go fishing," to the time I had my boat in the truck and I was leaving. Yeah, and now, I think it'd be nice. Like my most of the time, my dad's probably going to go when I go. Mm. Um, or someone's going to go, but I think it would be nice if he had something like that yeah. that we could build out, and it stays on that. And we um, get a cover, because Native makes covers specifically, so they fit the boats really well, would yeah. keep it covered, and then you get to an area, you have That's landing nice. gear on it, you slide it off the trailer on the landing gear and into the water. You're not, you're never lifting the boat. Um, Jerry had his new Outback. Yeah, I heard, I heard he, he, was, yeah. He, almost, he almost made a life-changing decision and to went go Native. Native. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I actually almost pulled a Hail Mary and switched because I'm getting the Lady Liberty, the the full red, white, and blue hull yeah. next week after Thanksgiving, uh, first week of December, um, to change that to gray because uh, that's really hard to do right now. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like March for boats. Wow. Um, 
for my, almost those went Titan ten fives. It's going to be March. Yeah, I could shoot for an earlier window, but that's when they're. I guess I got. To I work. just put them on a preseason. Yeah. So that I can pick them up earlier. Okay, we'll figure um, that out. I might need to do some. I might need to rig those boats before. Because Native or Big Adventures almost said that a lot of some of these orders they won't be able to fulfill the whole thing. It's like dealers putting in like a hundred boats. Wow. Or the actually, they built out another order for us for June. Uh huh. Just in case it gets busy. Okay. So we already have a June order booked for Native and Bonafide. Uh, from Big Adventures, hmm. in case things get backed up, it's already in the system. Yeah. Because what happens is they, we'll get to June and it just it gets clogged up like it did last year, and they just shut off orders. I'm so gonna, I have a second wave of boats already planned to come in, and I might not sell any. I'm gonna we're gonna have to talk because I may need. To, oh, I can get your boat sooner. I mean, I mean, because I need to. I'll need to do some some rigging and um, some other stuff to those. Oh no, I just I put them sure. on that preseason, which is uh, I actually have them sip. Or set the ship on a tractor trailer that okay. they pick, okay? Because there's forty something boats instead of okay. us picking them up. We, we still got time on that. We'll, yeah. we'll figure that out. I got to rent so. a dually to drive a truck to Fletcher because of the hills. It's Asheville. You yeah. know, you know, doing that. Yeah. Um, Dave's like, yeah. I'm not Are you going it. down to get them? No, I say um, I'm not. Tra- I'm not pulling our work trailer on my truck, but oh. my truck would be perfect for it. Our work, one of our work trucks, Dave's GM is a six cylinder. But are you going to go get them? <laughs> Possible. No, no, no. I set I set my big order up to come on a tractor trailer. Okay. okay. I'll probably go get the December shipment that has my dad's boat mm-hmm. um, and do that in a day trip. Because, you know, I have a place down there that's not far from oh. Asheville. Oh, so I got I, cousins in Asheville oh, you, if I you wanted to stay overnight. In Asheville? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a long trip for a day trip. I did it before. Yeah, that's a long trip for a day trip. I did it in months. an ice storm um, with oh. the Kogel Bearings guy, Ard. Ginger Grinder over there. <laughs> well, I was working cyclocross nationals. Um and we drove back that night because it was supposed to get bad. Mm-hmm. We got stuck, and my my truck's two wheel drive. Ugh. It did immaculate. That did truck it really? has done that truck has done so much in snow for me, with about a thousand pounds of it. sandbags. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that sucks. You leave them in there all winter. You're like, man, I'm burning some gas. Weigh the boat down. Um, weigh, the, weigh the weigh the truck down. Anyway, um, um, that's yeah. I'm, I got I, like, a I'm kind of. This is the latest I've stayed up. I was telling you in the last podcast. I know. I'm in bed between 7.30 and 8. I know. I'm feeling it, too. So let's jump in here real quick. And uh, if there's anybody in the live stream that wants to play along with this or that's this week, feel free to jo- to dive in, and Joey will take care of it and make sure that you get in the mix. Okay, Joey. First Ooh. item on this week's this or, la- this or that. Would you rather go noodling for catfish or get bit by a snakehead? Ooh. I'm gonna go noodling. That scares me, I, dude. Oh, snakeheads scare me. I think I. Oh, oh god, oh, I man. Stick it, stick in your hand in a dark hole. And you get a snakehead to bite you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those catfish are huge. Oh, I have zero desire. Like it gives me the heebies when people noodle in I, the first I, place, especially when they they submerge. They're not just like on the bank sticking their but arms. In I a hate hole. snakehead. I think I'd rather get bit by a snakehead. But although you know that's nasty Ugh. though the bacteria that's in their mouth. Oh, you're gonna lose your arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna rot away. Anybody chiming in on the live stream on that one, or they get all Hopefully creeped not. out and be like, "Oh no, not going anywhere." Yet. Um, this one's easy, Joey. This next one is super easy. Would you rather go fishing or watch the news? The news lately is quite entertaining. <laughs> if you true. make a drinking game out of it, it's true. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm going to go fishing. I was watching. I told you earlier. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I was watching them at work today too. I was watching the hearings with uh, Facebook and Twitter yeah. and Google today. They were on when I was working, and um, that dude that runs Twitter, he legit looks like he, like he should be running a cult. With the with the weird eyes, it was the, the nose ring that did it for me. I didn't actually see. He the was nose dressed ring. so prof- he looked professional, but he had the nose ring. I'm with like, the big beard, you don't go up to a hearing with the Senate with the big beard. Yeah, well, he wasn't at there. He was like, no, no, no. He was on a webcam. Yeah, and uh, he looked creepy, dude. Zuckerberg was very well, pro- was he professional. Looks like a, he looks like an he android. looks like a like an alien thumb, like but a robot. Um, that was pretty entertaining watching that. <laughs> uh, I was doing it at work before the Hogan. Before and after Hogan uh, today. Um, did he say anything today at all? I was on my bike. Everything is... It's just more restrictive. It's supposed to, just getting further and further. It's retail closer, stuff. Closer you know, we're actually doing horrible again. And, you, you know, 
Yeah. Be smart. Don't go out partying. I hope we don't end up with another shutdown. Do I take really out food. Don't go eat. Yeah. Whatever. We, well, we, well, actually, we, what we need to do, like our prime rib night soon, is do it like a. Uh, we well, actually should have like a steak night here or something. They won't. The, um, the lighthouse won't do the. Prime they won't rib do takeout to until I call yeah. Rusty. Oh, you got the hookup. Because he did takeout for me before in the past. You could get the hookup, buddy. You should do the hookup. We ought to do that on a Monday night, and we'll flip podcast on Monday nights, and we'll have Jerry as a guest. Jerry, I say, uh, I don't know, Jerry. Well, Jerry's not allowed to be on a webcam. Jerry, Jerry uses a Hobie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anybody in the live stream chiming in, Jerry? I don't, I'll give you. I'm not gonna. Stop, I'm gonna stop asking you. I'm my dad, you. my dad said neither, and then Kyle love it said nope. I'm good. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, daylight savings time or standard time? And note, Joey, that it is 117 days from today until we spring oh, yeah. forward the clocks. We're on a different podcast. We were talking about that last podcast. Mm-hmm. Or standard standard times just don't worry about like it. Like it is now. Yeah. Daylight savings times gives you more daylight in the later. Does it technically? Evenings. No. It's the same, it's the same amount of daylight. <laughs> same amount of daylight. It's just that it shifts so that you got now, more if daylight. I have more day, no more dark time after work, <laughs> then sure. Well, that's it. I'm that's not getting up at 4 35 o'clock to go fishing now. That would be daylight savings. So you would prefer daylight savings time because you want more light in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. I would take that too. I hate the dark. This is just, oh, it just, especially right now when we're on like, you know, almost to a new moon. So there's like you go outside, it's pitch it's black. Pitch. Oh. I, was, I was taking the trash out last night. It was pretty with the stars. Well, yeah, there's I a love looking at the sky. No. Um, I don't know. It's I, I had a, I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, I don't think I definitely, I most assuredly and definitely will I take m- more daylight. I don't mind it because I'm getting off at I am getting off at five, and it's kind of like eh. Um, it's not like when I used to work till seven, had an hour drive home. It, I it, think it felt I like I was getting home so late. I well, that's late. Yeah, I get home at eight thirty. What time did you start that day though? Like eleven? Yeah, it was a weird day. No, I started yeah. at eight thirty. Yeah, I got anyway. bankers hours. Um, this is the best this or that this week. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Never get skunked, or be a knot tying expert. Meaning that you know the exact knot to tie every situation and every scenario, and you know how to do it quickly and perfectly. Oh, I'm going to go uh, not expert. Yeah. I've so. had all the way down to like a trout stream to where I've missed fish because I was dicking around. But the other times I was actually really fast and I caught fish because of it. And, yeah. you know, the fly, like obviously a lot of the fly stuff. I tie different knots for different lures, whether it's going to be... And mm-hmm. half the time I forget the name of the knots now, but I've also missed fish because my I screwed up my knots because I was rushing. So mm-hmm. I'd rather secure myself with a knot. I I'm right there with you. I I this I thought was a tough one. Never but it getting sucks never, getting skunked. Never getting skunked like a guarantee. Every time you go fish, you're going to catch a fish. Um, but I still think I'm right there with you. I'd rather be really proficient i don't think you can ever truly be an expert at anything but I'd, I'd love to be really proficient with my knot tying to be able to do it quickly because i would ch- i would probably change baits more often if it didn't if i didn't feel like it was such a labor to go through the process of of changing baits and tying knots and leaders and all that other stuff could use so. a swivel <laughs> god <laughs> Stop uh, it over there, you. Uh, <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody with that? The the, the big swivel. I've seen like big, swivels big, a lot. Big quick change on the end of something, and they'll tie it to a I plug. Did, it's like, <laughs> Dave, uh, hopefully Dave, I don't know if Dave's listening. Um, I don't know if Dave knows about our, how to locate our fish. He asked me the day <laughs> fishing. He goes like, I'm tying, a, and I could tie stuff. I'm actually really fast on a lot of stuff. And I got, he's like, how'd you do that fa- so fast? And I'm like, oh, just, I'm used to it. But then he asked me, he's like, so why don't you use a swivel? And I didn't know how to give him a respectable answer. <laughs> there's well, only, there's uh, only there's only one thing, in my opinion, worse than the swivel user for the quick change huh. is the um, upside down spinning reel. <laughs> oh, um, that drives me nuts. <laughs> oh, come on. That doesn't drive you nuts. The upside no. down spinning wheel. And the swivels don't drive me nuts. If a swivel gets someone like Dave to keep fishing. I'm going to go. Okay. If Dave right. doesn't want to do knots. And Dave used to be a hardcore mountain climber, so he okay. should be good at knots. Yeah. Um, if if that's how Dave switches stuff really easy, I just I don't use a swivel because I think 
certain baits, it gives a different it makes, action. It makes the bait run wrong. Yeah, and, and so, yeah. I don't know. I I like tying knots, um, but some people want to real. I, well, no, swivels. I don't have want to sound place. snobby either, because like when place. I say oh swivels, yeah. but swivel has their place, and if it helps someone like Dave fish more, then sure. And, and if someone's got to reel their thing upside down, you know, it looks a little <laughs> I weird. Can't, I can't stand but that. But <laughs> I'd rather them do that than not fish at all. Okay, maybe I was being snobby. I apologize. Snob. To everybody. Am I getting any backlash in the live stream? Because actually, I was being everyone. Kind of... We just lost everyone. <laughs> um, but uh, I was actually, being snobby. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I wouldn't say snobby. If, if you want, yeah, it was, a Zepco uh, thirty three is what they need. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kyle Lovett said, um, "Daylight savings for me." Phil said, "Daylight savings." Battling with the baby today. Did I miss the kayak update? <laughs> oh boy, Phil. <laughs> did you miss a kayak update? Um, the Paul, um, Paul, my dad said never get skunked. Kyle said never get skunked. Philip said never get skunked. Wow, a lot of people went to never skunked. Uh, my dad said I hate the upside down spinning reel. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> um, Sean said I'm used to running swivels. Makes it easy with the kids. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. suck it, Brian. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm making you look bad now. Spinning but Kyle said his first combo was a spinning reel on a casting rod. Hey, oh. it works. Yeah. It works. It works. It's got a little horn, but oh. it works. I would say whatever you man, that's Zepco thirty three. Sure. A little and close I ended up buying around. one. My dad it's it's at my dad's. Um I ended up getting like a platinum version when I was a little bit older that bass that mm. I got a bass pro. It's like those are those are awesome reels. My my dad always fished with a little closed face spinning reel. He he had he loved the fish. He had a little ultralight, closed face spinning reel. It was real nice, and he fished with that. I I don't remember him fishing with much of anything else. Uh, um, um, and I get it. The swivels the swivels really do make it easy with the kids, yeah. especially if you're bait fishing. You know, at the end of the day, because it's you know it's bait. You can run that night crawler up over top of that swivel if you wanted to, and you never know it's there. <laughs> um. So. Two fish today. Dave was telling me some sonar beacon, whatever, uh, recorded an 18 foot tuna offshore somewhere. Yeah. Wow. And I saw some dude catch a 34 pound uh, rainbow trout in New Zealand today in the new, in the Holy fishing news. Holy cow! But um, wow. Yeah, an 18 world record fish, 18 foot tuna ROV deep water footage. Um. So it wasn't somebody caught it. No, it was on. It was footage of it, and I, it looks like it might have been out a while ago. With the summer and Dave just saw it today, which wow. Um, well, apparently in two thousand, this might have been a long time ago, and Dave just told me about it because. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, imagine okay. an eighteen foot tuna. I cannot even begin to imagine what an eighteen foot tuna would look like. And the camera looks small. I mean, I'll be honest with so you. So there's a picture of an 18-foot video. A video of an 18-foot tuna. Can Is there any way you can actually get the scale accurately if it's underwater, remote? I don't know. No, the 34-pound rainbow trout looked even, like a freaking... It didn't look like a trout. That's even it more. It looked like awesome. a salmon, but... um. I don't uh, know. Maybe Dave, maybe Dave just saw this recently. Oh, no, rare 18-foot... <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it up for the fishing podcast. I would, I would. Could you imagine all the sashimi and? Oh, yeah, but I, th- at, fish at eighteen dental, foot, yeah. it's probably it's like the fish, the meat off a of forty inch rockfish doesn't yeah. taste that great. No, those twenty inch fish is where it's at. Yep. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Um, with you. Above thirty, it doesn't taste good to me. Wholeheartedly, I'll agree with you. I won't be snobby because I don't catch big fish. <laughs> um, I wonder how old that tuna would be, says Kyle. Yeah, yeah, that. That's crazy. It's like Tony telling us about those forty inch, forty plus inch red drum in mm-hmm. the bay that they're probably oh, they're, forty years old. They're ancient fish. Yeah. yeah, ain't no telling how old an eighteen foot tuna is. Good. I'm having a hard time getting my head around that. You can. It's eighteen feet. <laughs> I, yeah, you got a big yeah. head, but yeah. All right, Joey. Anything else before we shut it down? No, I gotta go to bed. I'm whooped. I know. And I gotta do dishes. <laughs> Anything going on? Well, we talked about what we had going on in the the Yak Anglers Facebook group here a little well, bit earlier with uh, the, the drama with the trailer the trailer mocking. Um, <laughs> what is his name? He's putting up some good St. Mary's Lake videos. Yeah, Darren. Darren. Dar- yeah, um, yeah. Is it Rhino TV? Yep, Rhino Fishing um, TV. I actually, got to go through and I feel bad. I've, there's been so much crap on Facebook. Um, I got to go. Yeah. Rewatch you know, some of those. 
I don't I don't really pay that much attention to Facebook unless it's groups. Oh, you guys are on that WeHoo thing now. No, no, unless it's group stuff that's related to fishing or bikes or unless it's like Well, to be fair. Th- to be fair. To, to be, be fair. To be fair. I kept getting blown up with GTD t-shirt uh, notifications <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, screw it. I'm not logging in today." <laughs> <laughs> we sold a crap ton you, of t-shirts. You Joey. did an <laughs> awesome job with t-shirts on with our other podcast. <laughs> okay, folks, if you're looking uh, to get in touch with us, you can find. We just talked about how we don't use Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Angler Magazine <laughs> Chesapeake. I'm bad at Facebook Messenger. <laughs> just a heads up. Uh, yeah, or texting. Uh, Instagram at Chesapeake Angler. You can find me at B N Range. Joey, how can folks get in touch with you? Uh, probably through that somehow you can find me, but I'm at Joey Skorsky24. I've heard that if you just yell, hey, Joey, on Instagram as a hashtag, that it, that's like one of the only hashtags oh, that works that. right now. Yeah. Hey, I Joey. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash Chesapeake Anglers, where you can find us in the video land. And of course, you can read the e-magazine online at ChesapeakeAnglerMag.com. Joey, that's it for us tonight, buddy. That's- that, was, that was a long night. Let's call it a night. You know what I realized? That we had hamburgers earlier, and now mm-hmm. we're having cookie hamburgers. Cookie burgers. Cookie burgers. Hold your cookie burger up, because those oh. things are legit delicious. Um, it's like a chocolate chip it's cookie. It's a white. So you get like six of these things for five yeah. bucks. Yeah. Um, Ooh, yummy. It was good. Also, we didn't talk about our... We didn't talk about um, beer. What did, you had water second yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm still on this. It's called a Campfire Amplifier. It's like a s'mores chocolate stout. From Dogfish Head. With graham cracker and cinnamon chocolate. and I don't taste cinnamon, which is great because I hate cinnamon flavored stuff. I'm, I love cinnamon. Even though there's a little cinnamon in this bourbon. I love which cinnamon. Which tastes okay. Cinnamon buns. <sighs> oh, no. I love cinnamon, but with alcohol. I just get flashbacks of like bad fireball incidents. or uh, <laughs> um, Fireball. Uh, I actually, as much as we got off the fireball thing, I hate uh. fireball. <laughs> Well, I mean, Fireball was fun to find the little bottles on the side of the road. Yeah, what was that goal? What was that other, uh, um, uh, like whiskey or something that had cinnamon? It was just freaking disgusting. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I had it back when I was closer to the age of twenty-one. Not as <laughs> no, I'm a no. I'm a turd. Uh, Ten no. years later, no. Um, no. I don't drink that anymore. Don't know nothing about um, it. Um, now this uh, for stout people, uh, people that like darker really beer. Good. That was really it's good. pretty good. Yeah. And in in a fancy glass, it, the hops uh, come out differently. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some people are like, you have to drink it out of this. No, I got these as a, as a gift, so I drink right, out of it. We're going to shut this thing I'm down gonna hard keep now. Gonna, I'm just going to shut it down. I'm right delirious and buzzed. <laughs> Thanks for everybody watching, everybody. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. <laughs> I can just keep going on and on. And in the live stream, thank you, all of you live stream watchers. We appreciate your input. Um, and until next week, we'll, uh, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye.